Hello, today I thought I'd show you how to make a nice little block called a churn dash. Now of course it could be made in lots of different sizes, but today I'm going to make it so that it's a six and a half inch block. So when it's sewn in it'll be finished at a six inch block. And I'm using two and a half inch squares as I quite like to do. For the main part, not entirely. There's a, a little uh, stripe that I've put in there um, because this, this part of the, the block is joined two little strips and I quite like the idea of a little soft stripe in there. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So what you need is to have five of your background squares to do your corners and your center square. And then you need four two and a half inch squares for your corners. And I've actually used a five inch square that I've cut into four squares. Gives you four two and a half inch squares. Um, and then I've, I've just used a strip of the striped fabric and also of the background. Um, there, so I'll just show you how I've done all that. It's not a hard block, it's a fun little block. So for this strip part, I've cut a strip of the stripe that's one and a half inches wide, and I've cut a strip of the background fabric that's one and a half inches, and joined them together. So I've done a little piece here. and um, So I've just joined them together with a quarter inch seam. And so when you join two one and a half inch strips together like that, with a quarter inch seam, you're going to be in left with a two and a half inch width strip. So we're going to cut our two and a half inch squares from that joined strip to give those little bits in the block there. So I'll just uh, cut this here. I'll just no, I won't move that because it's not going to go anywhere. I'll move me. So I'm just going to trim off the end of my strip here a little bit just to make sure I've got a nice straight edge. And then I'm going to come along two and a half inches and I'm using the measurements on my board. And I'm going to keep coming along that strip. And I need four of these. And I've got just enough there, which is really good. Because you need to have four of these. So this is actually a square now, um, which is two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And then I've got my squares that I've cut in half, these ones that I've cut out of my five inch square and then my background squares. Now to make these little triangles, I'm going to take a background square and one of my fabric squares and I'm going to lay the two, well first of all on my background I'm going to draw some lines. So I've actually already drawn them but I'll show you what I've done. I've drawn a diagonal line just using a pencil, like I, I use a mechanical pencil for most things. I quite like its fine line. So I'm going to draw a line that's diagonal from point to point. Then I'm going to slide my ruler over so that a half inch marking on my ruler sits right on that line that I've just drawn and I'm going to draw a second line that's now half an inch away from that first line. So I'm going to do that to four of my background squares. In this case I'm using white for a background and I've done another one here and then I'm going to lay that so you're drawing on the wrong side of your fabric, right sides together with one of my colours, squares, and I'm going to sew right the way along that centre diagonal line, then I'm going to come back and sew along the other one. So we'll quickly just do that, so you can see what I'm doing. Let's go to the sewing machine here. And so right on that sewn line, that, sorry, on that drawn line, And then we can feed the next one in. So you actually need to make four of these for your four corners. But I've actually already made a couple of them ahead of time. And then I'm going to go back now while I still joined in their chain and come along that second line. Now we don't need that second line particularly. I, it's a way of being able to use that fabric quite conveniently. We're going to be trimming that away. So you might have a bundle of five inch squares that you want to cut up or you might have lots of two and a half inch strips and squares that you're going to cut up to make something like this. So now we've got our two drawn lines and our two sewn lines and so I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to come in quarter of an inch on the ruler and lay the quarter inch mark right over that first sewn line so that in effect we're cutting halfway between 
the two sewn lines. So we'll do that with the other one. And we need the bigger half. It's not really a half if it's not as big, is it? Uh, we need this bigger one because we're going to fold that open and that's going to be a half square. This will give you a smaller version, but we don't need that for this quilt unless you're going to, or well, not for the block anyway, you might want it for borders or other bits and pieces. But I save all those, I'm getting quite a collection. Um, but now I'm just going to press these. So as I said, you need to make four of these, but I'm just making two for you today. So I'm going to press that in towards the colour. And I've got my little strips joined here to make these little squares. So if I was going to be making part of that block, I would lay those two and that one. So the, the stripe is going towards the centre each time. So we want that like that. And that one will come down there. And there's going to be a background, just your plain background, if you're using a plain one, in there. And I've already joined together one little row of them down here. So I'll just quickly run these ones through the machine and we'll get the block made so you can see it finished. Um, so just again with your quarter inch seam allowance. And, and then I pick up the next two right sides together and join them. to join the next two pieces on to make your little nine patch block. So that one goes on there. This is such a cute little block. Um, of course it can look really good made larger or even smaller. And this one is going to join onto the other side of there. two other rows that we need to make this block. I'll just give them a quick iron and then we can join them together and that'll be all done. Okay so because I've already done one row I press the seams towards the colour each time on this one so I'm going to do the same on this this other row. This is going to allow your seams to nestle quite nicely and then this is the centre row and so you don't want the seams going that way, you want them coming into the middle. Because that's what I've done. Come out, come out, and these ones will come into the middle. So that your seam will nestle nicely when you're joining the rows up. Okay, so now I'm going to join that to that, and then I'll come and add that one to it. And the block is nearly done. How exciting is that? So this is where I'm nestling my little seams, where the seams meet. If you press them in opposite directions, they'll just sit together really nicely. do the last bit now. So there's lots of different ways of setting blocks when you're doing repeat blocks. You can sash them or you can just set them together. Um, you can set them on point which kind of is on the diagonal. You can alternate them with another block. So much to think about. In my case I'm just doing the same block repeated next to each other. Now I'm just pressing these seams one way at this stage. So they're all going to go that way. So I'll just hold it and let it fold over as you, as you press it. So there's one delicious little blue and white block. And what I've done is I've actually alternated my background. When I'll show you a small quilt that I've made in a minute. So I've actually made some blocks with a white background and some with a soft grey. And rather than just 
um, set lots of white together, I thought it would be fun to alternate the colours. And if you did stronger colours than I've used, of course it would show up much more. Um, but that's your block, it's six and a half inches to measure and it's a six inch finished block. And here I have prepared earlier a small quilt using that block. So you can see that that would be that block. And then this one here with the, gr with the grey background is there. So you can see that just by alternating two background colours you can get a really nice effect with something as simple as that and also popping the little stripe in and that continues throughout and I've done blue and white and I've done green and grey as well so but you could do a whole scrappy look um, by just alternating the backgrounds would be really effective or well, there's so many things you can do so I thought that was just a little idea for a fun little block so that is called a churn dash block and enjoy it.